Grade 8 Math number 8.2D, Graph to Estimate Solutions. Yeah, we can do that. We can use a graph to estimate the solution of a system of equations before solving the system algebraically. If we make the scale of the axis to be small increments, the estimated coordinates of the point of intersection will be closer to the exact values. What I mean is, if we use four boxes to represent one, so that we would have one-fourth increments, we would be closer to exact values. And remember that we can check our answers, the found values for x and y, by plugging them into, you know, substituting them into the original equations. Remember, it's way easier to graph equations in slope-intercept form because we know where it hits the y-axis and the slope. And remember, a positive slope means the line is going to rise to the right, and a negative slope means it's going to fall to the right, okay? So here's our system of equations. Here are our two equations. And if you've been watching my videos, you know that blue and pink box are going to mean a blue line and a pink line. So these are our two equations. The first thing we're going to do to estimate them and graph them is to rewrite them in slope-intercept form. So let's do it to the blue one, okay? x minus 4y equals 4. x minus 4y equals 4. So the first thing we're going to do is subtract x from each side and create a z and a zero pair here, and now we've got a minus x on this side, so we've got minus 4y equals negative x plus 4, because that's a positive 4, so we've got minus x plus 4, okay? Now, to get this y by itself, we've got to divide each term by a negative 4, all right? So that makes our friend the invisible 1, so y is a positive y here, because we have two negatives. Then, we've got a negative 4, I mean a negative x divided by a negative 4. That's going to give us a positive x over 4 because of the two negatives. And remember, our friend, the invisible 1, is there, right? Whenever you see a variable by itself, there's really a 1 in front of it. Then, we've got a positive 4 divided by a negative 4. That's going to give us a negative 1. So now, we know our rise is a 1 and our run is a 4 because we got a 1 fourth because of that invisible 1. We also know it's going to hit the y-intercept at a negative 1. So we could do that right now. Negative 1 on the y-intercept and a rise and run of 1 over 4. So here's the negative 1 on the y-intercept and if we've got a, a run of 4 that takes us 1, 2, 3, 4 over and a rise of 1, that's 1 over 4, our other points here and we can draw our blue line through it see so it was a positive rise over run see so we knew it was gonna go that way alright so now we can do this pink one 2x minus 3y equals negative 3 alright 2x minus 3y equals negative 3 we can take away 2x from each side that creates a zero pair there and that's eliminated now we've got negative 3y equals a negative 2x minus 3 see See that? So, to get this y by itself, we've got to divide each term by that negative 3, don't we? That's going to bring back our friend again, that 1, okay? And, because these are both negatives, that y is now a positive, all right? And, we got a negative 2x divided by a negative 3. That's going to get rid of these negative signs and make it a positive, because we have two negatives, right? So now we got a 2 3rd slope, x, and this negative 3 over the negative 3 is going to give us a positive 1. Now, we know that we have a positive slope of 2 over 3, rise over run, and it's going to hit it at the positive 1 on the y-axis. Let's do that, okay? So remember, the slope is 2 over 3 on a positive 1 on the y. All right, and this is our pink one. So here's positive 1 on the y, and when we do a rise over run of 2 over 3, we got 1, 2, and our run is 1, 2, 3. That puts the point there, and we can draw our pink line, see? Now, what we do is we find the intersection of those lines. And it looks like it hits it at negative 4.5 and negative 2. Check it out. If this is negative 6 and that's negative 4, then that's negative 5. All right? Because it skips by even numbers. So here's our negative 5. And look, it hits it at about a 4.5, doesn't it? 4.5. This one hits it about negative 2, doesn't it? So that's going to be our estimate. Negative 4.5, negative 2. I got a question mark there because I'm not sure. Now we can solve the system algebraically. Here was our first equation, x minus 4y equals 4. So we add 4y to each side, and that creates that zero pair. And we've got 4 plus 4y on this side. 
that is going to take the place of x. So in the other equation where it had an x, we're going to plug in 4 plus 4y to find the y. So here we go. See? 2x minus 3y equals negative 3. So 2x, that's going to be our x. 2 times 4 is 8, and 2 plus 4y is 8y using the distributive property. And we drop these guys down. Now we can combine the like terms because I see 8y and 3y. That's going to give us a 5y, isn't it? Now we've got 8 plus 5y equals negative 3. So we could subtract 8 from each side. That's going to get rid of that one. And now we've got 5y equals negative 3 minus 8 is a negative 11. 5y equals negative 11. And we can divide both sides by this 5 to get our friend the invisible 1 to get y by itself. How many times does 5 go into an 11? 2 times, that's a 10. And then there's a 1 left over, that's 1 fifth. And it's a negative because we have a negative sign there. So it's negative 2 and 1 fifth. Or we can write it as a decimal because 0.2 is a fifth, right? So y equals negative 2.2. Now we're going to use that negative 2.2 and substitute it as our y to find x in the first equation. That was x minus 4y equals 4. So now we put the negative 2.2 there and we do our multiplication. Negative 4 times negative 2.2 is a positive 8.8. .8 x plus 8.8 .8 equals 4. Now, we could subtract 8.8 .8 from each side, create a zero pair, and eliminate that. And 4, a positive 4, take away negative 8.8 .8 gives us a negative 4.8. That's our x. Now we have our ordered pair. We've got the negative 4.8 for x. Here they are, negative 4.8 comma negative 2.2. That's the actual solution when we do it algebraically. Look at what our estimate was, negative 4.5, negative 2. That was pretty close. That's pretty reasonable, isn't it? Now, how could I have become more exact? Well, remember in the beginning I said if we made our increments smaller? What if when I had drawn my graph, instead of using 1 square to represent a 1, what if I made it so that three squares represented one or four or five and I made it bigger so that the increments were littler. There were more boxes between them. When I graphed the two lines I would have seen that it wasn't really 4.5. It was a little off from that and it wasn't actually two. It was a little below that. See? So the bigger you make the graph and the smaller the increments are on the graph the more accurate your estimate's going to be. Okay? That's how we graph to estimate solutions, all right? Just remember, you've got to put it in slope-intercept form before you graph it to make it easy on yourself, all right? In 8.2e, our next video, we're going to do a word problem. I hope it will be helpful to you. We're slowly plugging through this eighth grade math, and you're doing great, okay? Keep it up. Keep following. I'll see you next video. Bye.